Plants and animals both grow from a single cell to many cells, and this growth is due to cells dividing repeatedly. This is proliferation, an increase in the number of cells due to cell growth and division. Cell proliferation is necessary for growth, repairing damaged tissue, and replacing cells that have died. In plants, there are specialized tissues called meristemic tissue. These meristemic cells are undifferentiated, dividing rapidly and allowing the plant to grow. Later, these cells will differentiate or specialize and play specific roles in the plant, such as structural support or vascular tissue. There are two major types of meristemic tissue, apical and lateral. Apical meristemic tissue occurs in root tips and at the tips of stems. Apical meristemic tissue allows for plants to lengthen. Using a microscope, you will be able to see mitosis in the tips of roots and shoots. You can then calculate the mitotic index, which will be covered later in this presentation. Lateral meristemic tissue is seen in stem tissue and allows the cells to grow in width. In order for the plant to grow, mitosis must occur in the specialized meristemic tissue. The zone of cell division is the area where new, undifferentiated cells are formed. In animals, the undifferentiated cells are found in the zygote. These cells will make thousands of copies by mitosis and begin to organize themselves into layers in a hollow sphere called the embryo. Differentiation will then occur where cells will become specialized tissues such as muscle, lungs, and intestine. Remember, mitosis is used to replace cells that have died as well as repair cells that have been damaged. The cells in our body are constantly being replaced due to damage and death. Adults lose about 500 million skin cells a day, and so skin cells are constantly being replaced by proliferation. Not only is proliferation important for replacing dead cells, it is also how we repair damaged cells. I am sure you have had a skin knee or a cut in your skin. The skin is the first line of defense against infection and so it is important that the skin be repaired. There are stem cells in the basal or bottom layer of the epidermis that remain undifferentiated and continue to divide during your life. The daughter cells of these stem cells then differentiate into skin cells and leave the basal layer. When you have a wound, cell proliferation also occurs. White blood cells called macrophages and fibroblasts will travel to the site of the wound. The white blood cells will fight infection and the fibroblasts produce proteins to help with closing the wound. Fibroblasts undergo proliferation so that the wound is covered quickly. They also help to break down the fibrin clot and make collagen that helps support other cells involved in healing wounds. The life of the cell can be divided into major phases. We call this the cell cycle. It is during the cell cycle that cell proliferation occurs. There are two major phases to the cell cycle, interphase, and the mitotic phase, or M phase. Interphase is the longest phase and includes three parts, G1, S, and G2. There are also checkpoints that occur during interphase. Mitosis follows interphase and cytokinesis follows mitosis. Mitosis is a division of the nucleus and includes prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, which were discussed in a previous video. Cytokinesis is the division of the cytoplasm, resulting in two new daughter cells. It is important to remember that normal cell functions, such as protein synthesis, cellular respiration, and photosynthesis, do not stop. The cell continues to undergo normal cell functions as it prepares to divide. Interphase is a metabolically active period and is the longest and most variable phase of the cell cycle in most cells. Interphase is further divided into three parts, G1, S and G2. It is during interphase that the cell grows. During G1, the cell is growing. G1 follows mitosis, and the cell is the smallest at this point. S phase is the synthesis phase, and it is the time that our DNA is copied. DNA replication is discussed in another video. G2 sees further growth and preparation for mitosis. It is during G1 and G2 phases that organelles are doubled, such as the mitochondria and chloroplasts. Organelles in cytoplasm must be doubled during interphase so that each daughter cell has the correct number of organelles and amount of cytoplasm. It is important to remember that the cell does not stop functioning while preparing to divide. Proteins must still be made, cell respiration must continue, and plants continue to undergo photosynthesis. The cell cycle is a process that is controlled by specific molecules that allow the cell to move from phase to phase at specific times. 
Two important classes of molecules that control the cell cycle are cyclins and cyclin-dependent kinases, or CDKs. Let's talk a bit about how these molecules work. Cyclins bind to CDKs, phosphorylating them, which allows the CDKs to function as enzymes. Remember that phosphorylation is when a phosphate group is attached to another molecule. Frequently, that molecule is an enzyme, which causes it to be activated. It is these activated enzymes that control the cell cycle and the movement of the cell through the different phases. There are checkpoints during the cell cycle where these CDKs function. Some cells will pause during G1 and then are a phase called G0, which is a phase where the cell does not grow. Some cells will stay in G0 for a short time, waiting for another signal to continue into G1, while other cells stay permanently in G0. Examples of cells that do not undergo mitosis and are constantly in G0 include nerve and muscle cells. Cyclin levels change during the cell cycle. When a certain cyclin level is low, there is less binding to CDKs, and the checkpoint cannot be reached. In order for the cell to move to the next phase, a certain concentration of cyclin CDK complexes must be present. This is how the cell cycle is generally controlled by these molecules, because their concentrations will dictate the timing of when the cell will move into the next phase, if at all. G1 cyclins are the ones that tell the cell to grow or prepare for the S phase. Mitotic cyclins are responsible for the production of microtubules, which are necessary to produce spindle fiber. There are times when things go wrong in the cell cycle, and consequences of mutations can cause uncontrolled cell growth, the definition of cancer. These mutations can occur in DNA that produces cyclins and CDKs. Uncontrolled cell growth causes the cell to grow rapidly without differentiation. The cell has now become cancerous, and the copies it makes can form a mass of cells that is called a tumor. These cells cannot function normally. Cancer is found in many forms of life, not only humans. So how do primary tumors form? There are genes called proto-oncogenes that can become oncogenes. Proto-oncogenes encode proteins that encourage normal cell division. Mutations in proto-oncogenes can cause them to become oncogenes, which causes an increase in cell division and possibly cancer. When you see the prefix onco, think cancer. A doctor that treats cancer is called an oncologist. Usually, cells will undergo programmed cell death called apoptosis, where they no longer function. These cells are broken down and recycled. Oncogenes change apoptosis, so the cell keeps undergoing mitosis. A mutagen is an outside agent that triggers the oncogenes to begin to mutate. Healthy cells have genes called tumor suppressor genes, which code for specialized proteins that help regulate the cell. There are several functions of these genes. Some control cell growth to make sure cells do not grow too rapidly or that apoptosis occurs when needed, while others repair DNA that otherwise may cause uncontrolled cell growth. If the tumor suppressor genes are damaged or mutated, the cell cycle will be affected, causing uncontrolled cell growth and possibly cancer. Think of proto-oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes as brake pedals and gas pedals in a car. There needs to be a balance to keep the cell cycle functioning normally. Some mutations in tumor suppressor genes can happen during your lifetime, but others can be inherited. Sometimes there is no mutation, but the gene is still unable to function properly. This may be due to silencing of the gene. Silencing can occur when a chemical molecule is added, such as a methyl group. This is called methylation. While tumors are masses of cells that have undergone uncontrolled cell division, not all tumors are alike. A primary tumor is a mass of cells that occur at the original site of the cancer. A secondary tumor is when metastasis has occurred. Metastasis is when cells from the primary tumor travel to another location and begin to grow. For example, breast cancer may metastasize to the liver. Many people hear the word tumor and immediately think cancer, but not all tumors cause cancer. Tumors that cause cancer are called malignant, while benign refers to tumors that do not cause cancer. Benign tumors do not metastasize, while malignant tumors can. You may be asked to calculate a mitotic index on the IV exam. Mitotic index is important in predicting how cancer cells respond to chemotherapy. Chemotherapy is the treatment of cancer with drugs. If cells are undergoing rapid cell division, the mitotic index will be high. Cancer cells that have a high mitotic index may be more difficult to treat. If the mitotic index is low, the doctor may consider the patient to be in remission or cancer-free. All cells have different normal mitotic indexes. For example, the skin and liver may have a higher mitotic index, where other cells may have a lower mitotic index. You will use a microscope to calculate the mitotic index. You count all the cells in your field of view and then find the cells that are undergoing mitosis. 
divide the number of cells undergoing mitosis by the total number of cells and then multiply by 100. For example, if you have 100 cells in your field of view and you see 90 in interphase, 5 in prophase, 3 in metaphase, 1 in anaphase, and 1 in telophase, what would the mitotic index be? 5 plus 3 plus 1 plus 1 divided by 100 or 10%.